Pamela Steiner is a fellow with the FXB Center for Health and Human Rights at the Harvard School of Public Health and an associate of the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative. She directs the Intercommunal Trust Building Project, which aims to contribute to an improvement in the relationship between Armenian and Turkish communities. She co-founded the program on international conflict analysis and resolution at Harvard's Weatherhead Center of International Affairs, in which I was very honored to participate. She has extensive experience in conflict resolution and reconciliation efforts, especially with Germans and Jews, Israelis and Palestinians, and Armenians and Turks. In this audience, however, you'll most know, you'll know her best by the fact that she is the great-granddaughter of Henry Morgenthau, former M American ambassador to the Ottoman Empire. Hello, everyone. I am grateful and happy for the privilege of participating with you today. And I'm thinking that my great-grandfather is right here with us. My understanding is that this event's purpose is to honor the memory of those who died by sounding the alarm against the ongoing cycle of genocide denial. There are many ways to sound this alarm. I am going to do so by talking about three mutually interdependent hopes for Armenians, Armenia, and the region. They are hopes for greater democratizing, progressing, healing. First, the hope of greater democratizing. Before the genocide began, Morgenthau promoted American-style democracy to the Ottomans. Not knowing what was coming, he probably believed that the young Turks would heed his advice. Here's some of what he said in a speech he gave in the presence of Talat Pasha, the young Turk minister of the interior. Being in Turkey, I want to say that I have shown you the wonderful rug, the wonderful national rug that we have produced in the United States. It was woven by the millions that inhabit our land, natives and foreigners, whites and blacks, people from the north, south, east and west, men and women, and from materials produced in our own soil and imported from all countries. It makes a fine, harmonious whole. My second interdependent hope is for progressing. Morgenthau spoke frequently of his admiration for Armenians as a remarkably able and industrious people. He believed such qualities would best flourish in democracy. He believed that corruption undermines such progress. Today, investigators have indeed found that progress is best achieved in democracies, democracies in which citizens dwell under laws resting in the universal values of human rights, thereby ensuring an equal playing field. When I was in Armenia and Karabakh a year ago, I met bright, able, hardworking, and wonderful young people with great educations. They love their land and want to live there but some have abandoned participating in Armenia's politics and governance, and others are thinking about doing the same. They are disheartened by the degree of corruption. They are disheartened when their integrity is held against them. Progressing also requires that a country's people be healthy and strong. Recently, a joint report by the Armenian National Statistical Service, the United Nations World Food Program, and the UN Children's Fund stated that severe food shortages are stunting the growth of 19% of Armenian children. Armenia cannot afford to lose more people. This humanitarian crisis is surely having a significant impact on the country's progress, demographically, socially, economically, and psychologically. I remember from my own childhood hearing about, and this was the phrase, the starving Armenians. 
Morgenthau worked hard to get food to them, as somebody mentioned here today. He would be saddened by the current situation of these 19% of children. He would agree that addressing the problem of Armenian children's nutritional health would be genocide commemoration of the highest order. Healing is my third hope. Morgenthau actively supported the need for ongoing healing. He had seen, in the words of Zabel Essayan, the, and this is, these are her words, the inconsolable grief that hopeless suffering inspires stamped on Armenian faces. Essayan's words suggest that healing after the monumental collective trauma of genocide may be impossible. I would modify her statement slightly and say that such healing will always be incomplete. And yet, quite a lot of healing is possible. The importance of healing includes how it would wisely inform efforts for more democratizing and progressing. The ending of genocide denial, that is acknowledgement of what happened by Turkey, is of course extremely important. It should be accompanied by apology, promise not to repeat, payment of reparations, correction of history teaching, creation of memorials, and dememorialization of certain street names and tombs. Such actions would lead to imagined and unimagined benefits for Armenians and Armenia, including, of course, improved Armenian-Turkish relations. One of the most important benefits from the ending of denial is that all living in the South Caucasus would be more secure and safe. At the same time, ending denial would also support the development of true democracy in Turkey with widespread positive ramifications for that country and its peoples. A week ago, I attended a discussion about the current situation on the Azerbaijan-Karabakh border. A roster of impressive speakers agreed that the looking to Russia by Armenians as a savior or rescuer or protector should be reconsidered. I suggest a parallel to that recommendation. It speaks to the hope for healing. Mourning is an essential element of healing. But I have read and heard it said by Armenians that they cannot mourn collectively until Turkey acknowledges the genocide. I do not believe that. I do not believe that mourning or healing depends upon Turkey's will and actions. Certainly not solely, partially, but not, so, not, not the grieving. Such belief surrenders too much Armenian energy and empowerment to the Turkish government. Therefore, looking to what Turkey does or does not do as this kind of savior should be reconsidered. In conclusion, what I'm saying is that I'm confident that my three interdependent hopes for healing, greater democratizing, and progressing are within Armenia's and Armenians' capability. I'm also confident that Ambassador Morgenthau would have agreed that fulfillment of these hopes would best commemorate those murdered by genocide.